Hello, Karina Essa here from Social Media Worldwide. And in this video, I want to share with you how to decide on a Facebook advertising budget. Before putting together a Facebook ads campaign, the first step is deciding how much budget you should allocate. Because if you spend too little, chances are you are wasting your time. And if you spend too much, it's like pouring money down the drain. And that specific amount is very different for each advertiser. So in this blog post, I'll share with you the process to go through to find out that specific amount. The first step is finding out your customer lifetime value or how much a customer is worth to you. In other words, the average amount of money a customer would typically spend with you in total. If you only have one product at $100 and a customer usually only buys your product once, then your customer lifetime value is simply $100. But if you have several products, upsells and downsells, then calculating your customer lifetime value is more complex. To calculate it, simply take the total amount these customers have spent with you over the past 12 months and divide it by the number of customers you've had over the past 12 months. You will have to make sure you don't include any refunds or cancellations. For example, if you've generated over the past 12 months $24,000 in sales and have served 200 customers, then divide 24,000 by 200, which makes your customer lifetime value $120. If you're only launching your business now and don't have that information yet, you will have to estimate your customer lifetime value. Of course, if you plan to only sell one product, then you don't need to estimate anything. Your customer lifetime value will simply be the price of that single product. However, if you plan to sell several products, you can roughly estimate that 10% of the people who buy your initial product will buy your second product and 10% of that 10% will buy your third product, etc. The second Second step is calculating your cost of sale. In other words, the cost of creating and delivering the product. For example, if you sell a physical product at $30 and it costs $2 to manufacture and $5 for shipping and handling, then the cost of sale would be $7. Other costs of sales could be anything from staff payroll, taxes, fees, storage, insurance, etc. So if your customer lifetime value is $300 and the costs involved are $50 per customer, deduct the cost from the customer lifetime value, which would be $250 in this example. The third step is knowing what you'd like your profit margin rate to be. In other words, what percentage of the revenue you make you'd like to consistently allocate as profit for your business. Profit margins vary considerably from one industry to another. For example, in the restaurant business, profit margins are typically 3 to 5%, whereas in the skincare industry, profit margins are typically 50 to 80%. If you're unsure of the average profit margin in your industry, a quick search on Google will provide you that information. Once you have decided on your profit margin, deduct this percentage from the customer lifetime value after deducting the costs of sale. For example, should your customer lifetime value be $250 after cost and you'd like your profit margins to be 20%, then deduct Deduct 20% from $250. That would leave you with $200. What this means is that your business can afford to spend up to $200 to acquire a new customer. The fourth step is to identify what a good cost per click and a good cost per lead is for your business. Again, these numbers vary a lot from one business to another because it depends on what your business can afford to spend to acquire a new customer. In order to identify a good cost per click and a good cost per lead for your business, you have to know your conversion rate of the landing page you plan to send traffic to capture leads and the conversion rate of your your sales process. For example, the conversion rate of your landing page for cold traffic could be 20%, meaning that out of 100 people who visit your landing page, submit their contact details, and the conversion rate of your sale process, such as your webinar, can be 10%, meaning 10 out of 100 people who are exposed to your sales message actually buy. Once you know your lead conversion rate and your sales conversion rate, it's easy to calculate how much you can spend per click and how much you can spend per lead you acquire. Let's say you can spend $200 to acquire a new customer and your sales process converts one in 10 leads. It means you can spend up to $20 to acquire a lead. And let's say your landing page converts at 20% for cold traffic. It means you can spend up to $4 per unique click unique visitor to your landing page. So to recap, to decide how much you're willing to invest in Facebook advertising, make sure you know the following numbers. Your cost per sale, your customer lifetime value, your landing page conversion rate, 
your sales conversion rate, the amount you can spend per lead, the amount you can spend per click. Once you know those numbers, it is up to you to decide how much you can spend to acquire leads and generate sales from Facebook. Should you wish to use Facebook to acquire 10 new customers a month and you can spend up to $200 to acquire a new customer, you can therefore spend $2,000 in total on a Facebook lead generation campaign, making sure you don't spend more than $20 per lead and more than $4 per unique click. Should spending a certain amount on Facebook ads not lead to a return on investment or not lead to at least breaking even, you can either choose to not use Facebook as a traffic and lead source or optimize and fine tune your campaigns to lower your cost per lead and cost per click as well as optimize your sales process to increase your sales conversions. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you did, I've got an even better bonus for you. If you want to know how to leverage the power of Facebook even further, I've got my Facebook account optimization video tutorial. I'm going to play a preview in just a second. Click the tab on this video and it's going to take you to where you've got instant access to that full video. Plus you're going to get another three videos from our best-selling Social Media 360 home study course and it's not going to cost you anything. In these additional three bonus videos, I'll reveal how to leverage the power of Facebook ads for more traffic and leads, how to monetize your Facebook marketing efforts, and the common mistakes to avoid on Facebook to experience results much faster than anyone else. If you've got any questions, put them in the comments below. Click on the thumbs up, it really helps us out. And also remember to subscribe to our YouTube channel, that way you'll see our newest videos. See you soon. Hello and welcome to this video titled how to create and optimize a Facebook page. So if you don't have a Facebook page yet or would like to create a new one, then just follow this tutorial. So first log into your Facebook profile because you need to have a profile in order to create a Facebook page. Then click on the drop down menu on the top right hand side and go to create page. Then choose what it is that you want to promote on that Facebook page. What kind of business is it? Is it a local business? So if you have a local business that you want to promote on your Facebook page, pick this category because the template is different. Is it a company, organization or institution? Is it a brand or a product? Are you a public figure? You might be a speaker, a coach, you might be a singer. Then pick this one. Entertainment. That's if you are in the entertainment industry or is it a cause or a community? So is it a charity, for example, then you would pick that one. So for the purpose of this demonstration, I'll just go and choose brand or product. That's the most generic one. And then choose the category. So is it an app that you're promoting? baby goods so I will just go and click on website let's pretend this is an online business I'm promoting so I'll put website and then put your brand name or your product name so I'll just put test and then click on get started then add a profile picture. Now, if you are the face of the brand, then you would put a headshot of you. Make sure that the headshot of you is a close-up. It's not a cropped picture. Make sure that it's not pixelated. It's a nice picture of you smiling with no messy or busy background. So you really want to look professional. When you upload a picture, make sure that it's 170 times 170 pixels. If the picture you upload doesn't fit well enough, then you can go to pickresize.com and resize your pictures.